The basic concept of Paul B's attachment theory is what is called the secure base. The secure base is the source of comfort that an infant or a child needs and the caregiver, usually the mother, is supposed to provide. And this is what we all have seen or hopefully experienced that when a child or in Harlow experiments a young monkey is afraid he runs toward the caregiver and then being hugged or lifted up in the air gives comfort and the infant of different species may, may feel better. In Bowlby's opinion the secure base is supposed to do two functions, to provide two different things. One of them is comfort. Whenever we're in pain, we're hurt, we're afraid, we're anxious, a child afraid in the middle of the night wakes up and starts crying, or another child playing in the park falls down, hurts the knee, children are going to ask for comfort from the parent. They're going to cry, they're going to approach, they're going to call for, and so on. And the task of the source of the secure base, the mother, the father, another caregiver, is to offer comfort and to show that pain can go away over time, that anxiety can be overcome, so that the child will come down. Once the need for attachment recedes, the child is comforted and the anxiety has disappeared, the secure base should provide another of its functions, and that is the inspiration for exploration. Once I'm calm, I'm comforted, I should return to play and I should explore the environment around myself. One of the early experimental illustrations came from an American psychoanalyst and a developmentalist, Robert M.D., who did a very simple research study recorded in his lab where a small child played in a large lab that I don't know whether he or she saw for the first time and the mother was sitting in the chair doing nothing, just observing the play. At one moment the experimenter comes into the room and gives mother newspapers and the mother opens the newspapers and starts reading and the child immediately comes to the mother and wants the newspaper away because the contact with the mother, just the visual contact with the mother, is so important for the child to feel secure. Just as a footnote, it is a very strange thing how Bowlby's theory and Winnicott's theory approach very similar phenomena and very similar observations and then give them different explanations and go into different psychological narratives or even poetics. Anyway, the exploration has different implications, very important ones. One of them, the child should return to exploring the physical objects. Take another toy, take another ball, go behind the bush, go behind the wall, see what's there. Another one is, it should be the same with the social world. The child should feel comfortable in exploring the social world, meeting new people, meeting new children, playing with them, not being initially, immediately, automatically afraid of new faces. And finally, it is noticed that in families where parents have a habit of talking about mental content, talking about why someone did something, talking about literary characters, their friends or whatever, if children receive this implicit message that talking about the mind is interesting and not dangerous and could be useful, children also start exploring minds and these children will most often be better in theory of mind tasks when they reach the age of four or five. Bowlby aimed at developing a theory that will be an object relations theory like psychoanalytic theories of his time but based on externally observable behavior. And this is something psychoanalysts have criticized him for long and some still do. Yet at the core of his theory is something that is very psychoanalytic 
and that is the idea of internal working models. So these two functions that the secure base provides for infants and children when they are very small, in Bowlby's opinion, is going to be internalized and it will become a set of unconscious expectations about the organization of the social world. Bowlby called them the internal working models and there are two of them, the internal working model of the self and the internal working model of the other and similar yet important, in important ways different than the objects of the object relations theory they're based deep in the unconscious. Once they are formed, you grow up, you organize your social world based on these expectations, you're, most often we are not aware of them. Most often something special needs to happen, a psychotherapy treatment possibly or something, that you become aware that they exist in your mind. The internal working models of the self and the other are built in accordance with what we see from our parents, what we learn from the social interaction with them. In very early childhood, the communication with caregivers is more or less the whole of our social world and definitely the most important part of it. And children for many long years, many long years from their perspective, believe that what happens in their house is the whole world. So if they learn that parents react in certain ways to their attempts to initiate attachment, they believe the whole world works that way. And they will later on most often expect that things will go the same way. They might choose the partners or steer relationships in certain directions or end relationships at certain moments in order for their experience to fit with these models of expectations they have inside of them. The internal working model of the self basically replies to questions am I worthy of being loved? Am I likable? Do I deserve respect? So it is very closely connected to the issue of self-respect or anxiety about low self-respect. And I believe it is very easy to observe in the social world, and especially in the clinical world, how many people have concerns about this. How good am I? Do I deserve any better? Or whatever the social world gives me is more than I deserve. Opposite to this, the internal work model of the other is basically focused on questions. Are other people worth my attention, love, respect? Are other people dangerous or friendly? Can I enter the social world and be relaxed and enjoy what other people can give me and what I can exchange with them? Or should I always be anxious, afraid, cautious because there's going to be pain there? These two systems, like comfort and exploration, very often exclude one another. If I need one to be very intense, the other one at that moment is going to be dormant or passive. If I'm very cautious about my self-respect, possibly I will not have enough focus on how to respect other people. The concept of the internal working models will have a lot of practical implications when it comes to the research in the domain of romantic attachment and when it comes to clinical and psychotherapeutic work that is based on the attachment theory. And all of these topics will be discussed in the coming videos.